Uh, my name is Robert Marvin, and I voted here in 2014. I believe it was in the early voting. My, my son and I went here to vote in the Brooklyn Center and City Hall during early voting, and uh, they had a had a had a um, a person who was bringing people in, driving them in, and then standing right in front of the uh, the, the desk where the city clerk gives you your ballots and so forth, and looking at you as you fill this stuff in and listening to what you'd say. And then she ended up following us into the area where we vote and started looking at our ballots and then started telling us who to vote for and telling us not to vote for this person and not to vote for that person because they were Republicans. So what this person was doing was bringing in voters and then what they were doing was is they were telling people who to vote for yeah, they were same day voter, voter registrations. And then, oh, I don't know if they were registering the same day or not. All I know is they were coming in and the person was witnessing them fill out the ballots, making sure they voted for the correct people. And then she was making sure they, they sealed up the envelopes and was witnessing her returning them to the city clerk. And then also, besides assisting these people, she was also involuntarily assisting people who were in the polling location, like myself and my son, who never even asked to be a, have our have have assistance and according to the statutes you're not people who are bringing people in driving them in are not allowed to uh, tell people who to vote for and they're definitely not allowed to tell people who to vote for who didn't even ask them to and in addition to that this per I thought the my one of my one of the uh, mayor candidates was there um, during the elections because when I came in the door I saw uh, his signs right outside the door so I just assumed he was in there and when I went in there, he wasn't there, and it turned out it was one of his workers who was there doing all this stuff. Uh, my name is Don Bumgrenner. Um, I've been an election judge since 2012. Uh, Robert Marvin notified me about what was taking place here at City Hall, and I noticed this uh, vehicle, a white Toyota, parked right by the entrance to City Hall with campaign signs all over the vehicle. I was the uh, worked at the primary uh, election in in uh, precinct four, and this uh, gal was bringing in people all day long. They were same day voter registering, and then after they registering on their own, after they got done registering, uh, she was going with them and t telling them who to vote for or showing them who to vote for. Followed them through the whole process. They didn't need any help. So she had the campaign signs on the vehicle uh, parked uh, in a polling location. They're not even supposed to be within 100 feet or even in anywhere in the polling location. Uh, notified, uh, I notified the city clerk about this who's in charge of elections here. And she, was, she said uh, they can assist as many people as they want to, no problem. Uh, Sharon Knudsen was the city clerk at the time. She has since retired, retired recently. Oh, the, can the candidate was Michael Elliott. He was running for mayor. The 20, 2014, this is 2014. Same thing uh, occurred uh, during the general election. This gal was doing the same thing um, at Precinct 4 and uh, notified uh, Sharon Knudsen about it again. She says they can assist as many people as they want to. They same day registered on their own. They didn't need any uh, assistance. It's a violation of uh, statute 211B.11, election day prohibitions. We, c we kept reporting this to uh, Sharon Knudsen and her uh, comment to, to me was this, the city attorney said this was legal. Who the city attorney right now at that time is actually a question because the city attorney previously was Charlie Lefevre and he passed away. And we now know who the current city attorney is and the, the, the law firm that represents us, Kennedy and Graven, has not changed the entire period. But up until even today, they declined to say who the city attorney was at the time because they've been refusing to produce this piece of paper. Uh, when, I made, when I made my uh, claims, uh, complaints, I complained three times directly to the city clerk. Also, I think it was the assistant city clerk um, who was there. And I was literally you know, in the city hall. So it was being, the head election judge was the head election judge for the city, the city clerk. I complained three times and she, she was obviously very frustrated, very irritated, and she actually even wove this piece of paper 
um, say, saying that she got this from the city attorney and she was told that this is assisting and it's legal. And I complained that this stuff isn't legal. I ended up I ended up pointing out like 15 things that I felt was illegal about it. And even the city attorney currently, the guy who I'm sure was the city attorney at the time, agrees that all 15 of those things are illegal. Uh, we got the Kennedy engraving the lawyer from Broken Park to agree this stuff was illegal. And we even got the people from Minneapolis to agree this stuff is illegal. But even till this, t and we went through this with the Charter Commission, and it's been going on for four years. And we only recently got um, some resolution to it. We had the city attorney come in and talk. Yeah, I and Robert are both on the uh, Charter Commission, and uh, we're supposed to make sure that the city is following uh, statute. So we brought this up, and the uh, chairman of the Charter Commission is the uh, also the chairman of the uh, SD40 DFL. Along about this time also, there were uh, numerous openings on the Charter Commission, and somehow they all got filled by Democrats, and one of them was the... Uh, uh, Michael Elliott, who was uh, running for um, mayor when this was going on. They, they fought us tooth and nail on, didn't want us to be able to even get any information on this. City, city clerk couldn't find anything. The city manager said they couldn't find anything. But the fact remains that she, this was illegal, and she told us that this was the city attorney uh, said it was legal. I'll help these guys out with a little statute stuff, okay? The state statute is very clear. There's a thing called vouching in the state of Minnesota. You can vouch for up to 15 people, but that does not mean assist them in voting. That just means you're vouching that they're a neighbor and they're, el they're eligible to vote at this station. When it comes to voter assistance, that can only be, according to statute, with people that either have a mental or physical disability and they need help voting. So that's the, those are the statutes, and it sounds to me like what you guys are presenting is they've, they violated those Minnesota statutes. Now, if there are some city statutes you guys are talking about, there are an ordinance or whatever it is, that, that they really don't ever, uh, city ordinances very seldom can, uh, you know, um, uh, trump a state statute. So whatever city things they were talking about, I don't know if they're eligible or not. But that, but that's the state statute because I worked on the voter ID amendment, and we were very clear on that. The city cannot uh, supersede state statute. Uh, this this involves state statute that the city clerk said, the city attorney told her that it was legal for this stuff to go on. We have lots we have lots of other examples of state stuff, but we can do that some other time. 